Hi friends, it's so good to see you today on Saturday. Hope you're having a wonderful uh, afternoon. Today I want to talk a little bit about um, trials and tribulations, about the difficulties that uh, many of us, if not all of us, are experiencing right now as we are apart uh, from one another. What do you do? when you're in the middle of um, a difficulty, whether it's this or any other kind. How do you handle uh, being um, in a place that you're facing a struggle of one kind or another? As we continue to live this new reality called COVID-19 self-distancing, um, more and more people are uh, feeling anxious, feeling sorrowful, feeling lonely, feeling fearful, um, and they're doing that for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, the first thing my mind thinks about are children who have planned that birthday party and they've invited their friends and they just are looking so forward to that time together. And now those gatherings have to be canceled or postponed. Our teenagers who had to leave school so abruptly, uh, they didn't get that experience, that euphoric experience of sitting in that classroom on the last day of the school year, looking forward uh, to what summer would bring. And of course, high school seniors, college seniors, those who have worked so hard in their education uh, that they have yet to walk across that stage and get their diplomas. I think about couples who have planned for so many months uh, their, their wedding, um, their, their celebration of their union together. And now some are gonna go through with that, but yet with only 10 or less people. And the party, the celebration, the reception will just have to wait. Businesses are anxious, churches are anxious, wondering if they'll be able to survive uh, after all this is over. You know, I know people who are experiencing job loss or decrease in hours, which means decrease in pay. And our seniors, our older generation, who has saved so hard uh, for that last stage of their golden years, whether it's their retirement savings or um, 401 savings, that now they're looking at a situation that they might not be able to make uh, ends meet after all of this is over. Yes, we are experiencing angst. We're experiencing some sorrow or some grief. And so what I want you to do um, today, tomorrow, you know, all the days that we really are going to be in this place of difficulty is to ask yourself, am I responding to this by faith? Or am I reacting to this uh, in a very human, um, fleshy way, in a worldly way? If we are responding by faith, we we'll still might experience a little anxiety, but we will know that God is with us, that he's not going to let us go, um, that he's not going to turn away from us and leave us uh, with, with no outs, with no future life to live. But if we're reacting to this, then we are going to live uh, not being able to sleep at night, not being able to eat or perhaps eating too much to fill ourselves in ways that, um, that uh, are bringing comfort, but the wrong kind of comfort. We will be afraid, we will be scared of what the days ahead will look like. A 19th century uh, preacher once said this, he said, no pain that we suffer, no trial that we experience is wasted. It ministers to our education to the development of such qualities as patience, faith, fortitude, and humility. All that we suffer and all that we endure, especially when we endure it with trust, builds our characters, purifies our hearts, expands our souls, and makes us more tender and more charitable, more worthy to be called the children of God. Trials, you see, give us opportunities for growth. And while I will never believe that God inflicts us with these things to teach us a lesson, 
He does, in fact, allow the gift of free will uh, to roam in our world. And so he does allow us to face these times of uncertainty and distress. You might be asking yourself, why me? Why now? Why that person whom I love? Why do they have to experience this? We have so many questions with so little answers. There was once a man by the name of Rufus Henry McDaniel who was born in 1850. He was a person of faith and by the age of 19 he was preaching in his home church and very soon after became a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ in 1873. He would go on uh, to write poems talking about his faith, talking about the assurance of God's presence. And this is uh, one of the writings that, uh, that he would leave uh, for um, next generations that bear witness to that. He wrote, I feel in my soul that God has something for me to do, brightening the experience of struggling souls. My chief desire is to be a blessing, if possible, to my fellow men and women through hymns and poems thereby glorifying God in the name of his dear son, whose I am and whom I serve. This would really uh, come to a place in his own life that it would be tested, those words. He and his wife, Margaret, uh, would marry and would end up having three children. But their youngest son, Herschel, died in the early part of 1913. So after this untimely death, this tragedy of his life, he sat down to write a poem about it. He felt like it was the best way to lift his son up and to honor his son's life um, in light of his faith in Jesus Christ. He sent this poem, along with others as well, to a publisher uh, by the name of Charles H. Gabriel. And having heard nothing for quite a while, he figured that uh, that poem was just rejected and so he could just lay it aside. But uh, Gabriel would get back in touch with him and told him that he added music to it. And so little by little, uh, that, that hymn would, be, would come to be known uh, in greater ways to a greater amount of people. It, the song began to be sung at what was called the Billy Sunday Crusades in 1915 and this hymn became so popular that people would sing this hymn as they walked down the streets in Philadelphia. The song is called Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. So one of those stanzas and the refrain goes like this. I'm possessed of a hope that is steadfast and sure since Jesus came into my heart. And no dark clouds of doubt now my pathway obscure since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart, since Jesus came into my heart, floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll since Jesus came into my heart. What trial are you facing today? And as you do face that difficulty, maybe that sorrow, that grief, that fear and that worry, do you find yourself uh, looking within, kind of going into yourself? Are you reaching out for God's help? Are you reaching out for the assurance that comes to people young and old by faith? It is my prayer that you will allow Christ to walk with you through everything that you're facing right now. And if we do that, he will fill us with discernment. He will fill us with wisdom. He will fill our hearts with peace because we will know that we are not alone. While we might be alone physically, we are never alone, never away from the touch and the grasp of God. Following uh, the closing prayer in just a few moments, I hope that you will take a couple of minutes to click that link that's there in the body of this post. That will bring you uh, to a YouTube channel 
to our own Dr. Justin West's YouTube channel. And there you will find him playing since Jesus came into my heart. And he does so in such an uplifting, beautiful way that I know that it will it'll give you uh, a bit of pep in your step, that it will give you uh, that assurance that you're looking for, that it will remind you of how good our God is. And finally now I want to leave you with a short passage of scripture uh, from James. Uh, James is in the New Testament of the Bible and uh, you will want to bookmark this because I know it will help you as you move through these next days, weeks, and possibly months. We'll be looking at James chapter 1 starting with the second verse. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, Consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Let endurance have its full effect on you, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. Let us embrace, as much as we are humanly able, the difficulty that is before us. However, we can only do that best by relying on, by leaning into the God of all creation, into the Lord of our lives, the Savior of the world. If we can do that, then we can stop reacting with all the ways that we do um, when we don't know where else to turn. Yet our Lord will help us to respond to the situation and respond to him in faith, knowing and believing that he walks with us. Now would you bow with me for a word of prayer. Gracious God, we come to you so thankful and so grateful for all the ways that you are present in our lives in all the ways that you remind us that you are just a breath away. God, I pray for all of my people at Blackwater and all who might be watching and listening to this reflection, Lord. I pray that they will indeed know your peace, know your assurance, know your presence, know the joy of enduring uh, these times of difficulty to know that on the other side of this, Lord, we will be uh, more strong and more united and revived in our life with you. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are on the front lines of this time of our lives. And we ask that you be with them, that you will hold them safely in the palm of your hand. And we ask this and we pray this in the mighty and beautiful name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So thank you again for being with me today, and I do pray that uh, I will see you tomorrow in two different ways, at 5 p.m. tomorrow at Blackwater United Methodist Church. Reverend Angie and I will be there in the parking lot for one hour from 5 p.m. to 6, and we hope that you will gather some things out of your garden that uh, you gather some tree limbs or some flowers. If you have palm trees, uh, you can bring those because you know tomorrow is Palm Sunday when Jesus came riding into Jerusalem and he was celebrated with the people there um, waving palm branches and putting them on the ground uh, for him to go over. So again, we'll be out there from five to six. And just remember one thing, you are not allowed to get out of your vehicles we want to see your face. We want to see your smiles. So unroll those windows and wave those parts of creation that God has given us out of those windows. And may we all shout together, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless.